He's like a bad magician who's working with like ad hoc assistants who weren't practiced for this. Yeah, he brings his hand up, he way, way up to tap into Elisa's energy. Like he needs to find good reception. And I thought people like him were opposed to 5G wireless, but I guess, I guess not. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it if Amaral fell on hard times and he had to star in a revival of those old Verizon commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel me now? Can you feel my bad touch now? <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. You're welcome, especially <laughs> this week. You're welcome. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting about 600 miles to my right is my good friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Well, Heath, the crazy thing is that it's kind of really t uses so many different ways of things don't, to, don't you know, do that. people have cancer. This show has Stop. been proven to, well, <laughs> it's just a lot, isn't it, really, when you think about it, a lot. Word salad. There'll be a lot of that. <laughs> great. And sitting somewhere to my great white north, taking a Quick break from his pickup shinny game is professional science communicator, award-winning podcaster, and for some reason now, veteran guest masochist, Jonathan Jerry. Jonathan, welcome back. Thanks, Heath. Uh, hey, thanks. <laughs> um, I, I noticed Noah couldn't make it um, again. So <laughs> I took the liberty of correcting most of Eli's mistakes. Thank you, document. my God. I hope, I hope that's okay. Eli, did you, you, you did go to school, right? Well, legally, I am allowed to say yes. So NYU, yeah, uh, technically, yeah. <laughs> NYU, really? Tish, though. Yeah. That's what they get on on your diploma. <laughs> they say legally you went to school. <laughs> Have a good one. Uh, uh, all right. And seriously, um, are you a, a hockey player? Are you like honestly taking a pause from a possible shinny game? <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I did play hockey when I was a kid. And I do know some grown-ups who still play hockey, but I, I gave up on that dream a long time ago. Oh, I kind of had to also. Too many teeth? Yeah. There are shinny rinks everywhere, though. It's the coolest. They don't, we don't have that here. We have, you got to find a pond. It's a whole thing. Yeah. All right. Well, tell us, Jonathan, I guess we have to talk about this movie show instead of do we? pick up hockey. Do we, though? <laughs> <laughs> um, what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched on Netflix... The Goop Lab, episode five, <laughs> The Energy Experience. And if you want to know how bad it was, Eli will tell you in a moment. But you can also you can also go to the Wikipedia page for the show and scroll down to the bottom. And there's a lot of negative reviews being quoted there, including my own. And the list <laughs> is growing. Excellent. Add to that pile. Yes. And uh, just to clarify really quick. The Goop Lab doesn't have the episodes in any particular order. It doesn't have its ideas in any particular order. Nothing about this matters <laughs> directionally or anything like that. So we just chose our favorite one to start with. It happens to be listed fifth on Netflix. But they even say right there you can watch these in any order. The title of this one is The Energy Experience. So that's what we're on. <laughs> yeah, and like Star Wars, episode five is the best. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> wow, shots fired. We're going to get a lot of feedback about that. A lot of emails, exactly. Good. Hot Bring takes. it on. <laughs> Episode five, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Eli, we ask you this all the time, but uh, this, is, this is an important one. How bad <laughs> was this thing? Well, if you love the camaraderie of the TMZ set, but you wish it were somehow more evil and dangerous, <laughs> you... We'll love this Netflix special. Oh, it's rough. It's, it's, uh, I feel like it has to be illegal. Jonathan, is it, is it legal in Canada? Would this be legal in Canada? I don't know. I don't know. I guess they probably had their own Andrew over there who probably said, hey, as long as you don't say the word medicine, you guys are fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to a few moments where they were like, medicine. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have to stop themselves several times. All right. Is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I nominate this episode as being the best at being the worst at finding cell phone reception with your hands 
If you think the human <laughs> body is a base transceiver station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing an interpretive 5G dance there, buddy? Yeah. What do you got going? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been at a concert and a little kid stands up and starts conducting? And then you ever crawl underneath that little kid and think he was healing your anxiety? That's what this episode is <laughs> hey, about. Hey, that happened to me when I saw cats in theater. It was fun. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Could have cured your sedema Conduct or whatever. Kentuckian yeah. six-year-old was actually a weirdly good energy healer. I don't know. Yeah. Kept doing it. <laughs> Dressed like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just missed out on dressing yeah. like a cat, That's the obviously. Key. That's the key. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to go with best worst reluctant evil sidekick. So we'll, <laughs> All right. We'll get into the details. Uh, I'll wait to explain until we get to him. But there's a, a terrible fraud energy healer. He's the main character besides Gwyneth in this thing. And he brings with him for his interviews this <laughs> evil sidekick, like apprentice guy. And at the end, that guy has to like do stuff with him. We actually watch them like, you know, perform a little bit. And the the psychic guy is so clearly like, I don't want to do the thing you're saying. It's super creepy. I don't want to do it. Uh, (laughs) No, no. And it's it's so much worse than uh, we'll get into the details. It's so much worse than I'm describing it. We'll we'll explain. He might as well introduce everything the other guy says with what my client means (laughs) to say is (laughs) similar along the uh, terrible, reluctant people who work at Goop. Front, uh, I'm gonna go with best worst skeptic now, Brian. Brian, yes, <laughs> my soulmate, my friend, my lover, my one and only. So, Brian, we'll get to it, but Brian is Goop's skeptic. Well, and he's getting best worst, best worst skeptic for sure, or best worst edit of the things Brian says. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not Brian. But one of those two things is true. I can tell you that. I, I yeah. dare, I dare you guys to have Brian on the show as a guest, uh, oh. as a guest on, on on a future Gamcast. Take That'd be him. amazing. Answer, yes, answer Rescue is him. yes. Tweeting him now. Rescue we could do him. <laughs> <laughs> Cut in a few of his sentence fragments, like they did on the Goop Lab. Just like sad, yeah. Brian, my name. That's like that's what that's what we get from this guy. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess now would be a great time. For everyone to do a little consciousness yoga, maybe some aura kegels. And uh, once we're all warmed up, we'll be back to tell you all about the Goop Lab episode five-ish, The Energy Experience. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first ever writer's meeting for Goop. Yay! Yay. Don't interrupt me, peons! I'm Gwyneth, but you can call me Gwyneth, and I am honored to share this space with you. Okay, weird uh, transition. I'm Jackie, but someone put the black one on my name tag, which is weird again. I used to be a... uh, a See the space, Jackie. Jackie, see the space. Sorry, what? You're taking up a lot of space. I need you to see the space. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Did you see it a little bit more? Just a little bit more. There you go. Great. A little Hi. bit further. I'm I'm Michael. I'm kind of a skeptic, if you know what I mean. And uh, I think that you absolutely will not oh. think. Oh. Um. Okay. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think this is gonna be fun. You know. Oh. Oh yeah. No, you can you can think that. Cool. Yeah. Fun. Great. So now that you are all absolutely unable to hide your disgust of and fear with me. Let's go put ourselves on camera and pretend we're friends. Okay. Jackie, step back! God damn it! (laughs) It was a very South Park version of Gwyneth Paltrow. (laughs) Hi, welcome to Typical Jewelry Buying Experience. How can I help you? Um, hi. Uh, sorry, are you wearing a ball gown and a t-shirt? Yes, everyone who works in jewelry retail dresses in an insane combination of formal and informal clothing, sir. Cool, sure. Um, I was looking for a little something for someone special. Oh, so you went to Majuri. What's Majuri? Majuri makes handcrafted fine jewelry for every day and every style. And you guys sell... Oh, here at the mall, we sell incredibly overpriced blood diamonds. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> You're super honest about that. Yeah, well, you know, most people don't know about me, jewelry, or really any place that isn't a mall that they can buy jewelry. That means that a diamond ring here that's less than $200 at Majuri is over $500 right here next to the Cinnabon. Wow. You, uh, you think there would be like a law or something? You would think that. Yes, you would think that. Okay. Well, I don't really know what I want. Um, can you help me pick something? No, no. But I will lead you over to our most expensive shelf and then glare at you hatefully if you don't buy something from it. Oh. Because uh, most of my pay is commission. So really the whole process is bad. Yeah, the whole, from beginning to end, everything about this place really wafts evil. But Majuri has a curated gift guide for anyone in your life. Friend, partner, even your mom. Oh, that, that's awesome. Yeah, and if you order before February 11th within Canada and the U.S., you'll get whatever you buy delivered to your door before February 14th, gift wrapping and all. Damn, that's fast. So where do I try it? Well, you can head to Majuri.com slash awful or use the code awful at checkout for 10% off your first order. That's M-E-J-U-R-I dot com slash awful for 10% off your first order. All right. Well, I'm going to leave now because everything about this place is evil and it smells like a Cinnabon. If I had a nickel. And we're back. And we're going to start off with the trailer for their show that they put at the beginning of every show. And it's like, it's like a lightning round of lying. The show is like regular speed lying. And this is just like, but la 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 as fast as they can. <laughs> a little montage of it. Starting with Gwyneth Paltrow explaining that her true calling is not acting. It's actually pretending that fake things are real and selling that for millions of dollars. <laughs> it's a lot different. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she says that uh, her calling wasn't making out with Matt Damon. And uh, at least she recognizes that that's not very hard. <laughs> she, she could have gone into rescuing Chilean miners or learned a trade like plumbing. By the way, I, I, I want to see that. I want to see a TV show of Gwyneth as a plumber to the stars. <laughs> yes. But no, no. She chose to hire the fan club from The Secret and pull an Ocean's 8 on middle class women. Yep. <laughs> and to be fair, she's nailing it. <laughs> she is. She's very good at that. Yeah. She's transitioned. Yeah. When she when she said that, I was like, oh, your calling's not making out with Matt Damon. It's uh, it's systematically destroying every vagina yep. on earth. What <laughs> cool transition for you, I guess. Yeah. And then she says, you know, we get to explore like, is this real? Do we feel better? And this, right there, this is the epistemological money shock. If it feels right, it's real. I, I, I don't remember intuition being part of the scientific method, but what do I know? I must have been nodding off during that particular class. Yeah, yeah, you missed it. You, you, I missed you went it. to sharpen your pencil and the teacher behind your back just mimed like this, is, did the jerk off gesture while they were talking and pulled down a slide that was just like, go with your heart. Yeah, because I didn't go to NYU, Eli. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You get it. <laughs> oh, and just this entire montage, every second of it, I was like, I want to watch every fucking episode of this show. Oh, and we will. We absolutely will. I already watched one of the other ones, too. It's <laughs> it's bananas throughout is the pattern that's been established by watching two. And then, of course, its introduction ends with a legal disclaimer, like yes. all good TV shows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I read the disclaimer? Please. Absolutely. The following series is designed to entertain and inform, not provide medical advice. You should always consult your doctor when it comes to your personal health or before you start any treatment. Which is, which is it's a version of the quack Miranda warning, right? Which says, <laughs> don't sue us. We're not playing doctors, but we totally are. It's like it's like psychics, right? They've, they have to advertise themselves as for entertainment purposes only. Meanwhile, they tell you your eight-year-old son's corpse is being eaten by dung beetles at the bottom of a well. Are you not entertained? <laughs> well, I never understand the purpose of this. Who does this fool? Like, what is this fool? This shouldn't work the in a court. The legal system, <laughs> Eli. The legal it's system. Li it literally fools the legal system. Correct. Why? The, can't we're, They're all grown-ups. Can't they all just sit around and be like, oh, yeah. You but guys we are said... in the middle of an impeachment trial, <laughs> Eli. That's fair. Yeah. You sense. know what? I heard it as soon as it came out of my yeah. mouth. <laughs> no. 
know. This is this is in the national interest for her to fool a bunch of rich people into buying jade eggs and solid gold, whatever the fuck. Right, magic bullets yeah. to put up their butt. Yeah, Leta say her. Yeah, it's Gwyneth. <laughs> If you're reading this, probably call your doctor right now is basically what it's saying on this on this <laughs> disclaimer. Should definitely not be allowed. Yeah. Also, one other moment in the little intro thing. They've got um like budget Dr. Ruth, whoever that lady was. Yes. And mm -hmm. she, she's talking about her like orgasm workshops, which sound pretty fucking interesting. But even Gwyneth is a little skeptical at this point. And she's like, sorry, hold on. What the fuck are you doing to the people in your workshops? Is that legal? And then they cut away because, like, probably not. Yeah, because the answer is the no. So I, I had to binge watch the entire uh, series because I was writing about this for uh, the McGill OSS. And that episode, actually, about female sexuality is probably the best one of the series. Like, it's it's actually there's no woo about it. It's actually quite good. Oh, nice. But it is the episode in which Gwyneth realizes on camera that she doesn't know the difference between a vagina and the vulva. Whoa. And that is just my I think we all know the difference between those things. Why don't you just tell us, Jonathan, so we all... <laughs> just to... Why don't you watch the episode, Heath? <laughs> I will, then. Great. And I'll still know. I'll know 100%. The vulva is 100%. the external genitalia and the vagina is on the inside. It's a Swedish... You're welcome, no, Heath. Now it's owned by Ford. <laughs> now, how, how's your dating life right now, Heath? I have a very, it's a nice um, Volvo. I like it. <laughs> it's better understood now. All right. Very safe. It's boxy, but it's good. We're going to, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to open. Boxy is not the word you should be using. No, no, they don't like that. <laughs> yes, Eli. So we're going to open this episode with a voiceover that tells us the entire universe is made of energy. <sighs> okay. Um, is it? <laughs> Isn't matter a thing too, Jonathan? Well, so uh, before you even answer, the show <laughs> answers for itself to contradict <laughs> itself because the very next sentence is, all right, well, it's entire-ish. Heath's being a dick. 4.6% of the universe is physical matter. So like literally the first sentence of the episode is wrong and the second sentence admits it was wrong by accident. That's how we start this show. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was surprised we didn't see a photo of Albert Einstein with the equation E equals MC squared on screen just to, to nail this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, if I had a time machine, I would go back in time and I would knock Aristotle senseless to make sure he didn't write down this word energy for the first time in human history. Because here we are, right? It's everything is a new age version of God and it is meaningless in this context. <laughs> Meaningless, but also the kind of true that makes it so fucking hard to have a conversation about, right? Where you're like, yeah. well, energy flows all around us. And you're like, I know you don't mean protons. Yeah, that's <laughs> sort of right, but not what you said. You're, you're not thinking of what Stop it is. Stop nodding. No, don't nod. Not. You're nodding. Like, no, I nope. You don't so. get to use any of the real parts that you accidentally <laughs> stumble backwards into. No. And then we're going to get our first clip here of the energy doctor, Dr. Armal. Is that Amral. right? Amral. Amral. Yeah, John Amral, letters that aren't MD, I believe. Yeah. Okay. I just want to say at the outset, this guy's name sounds like the newest and most dangerous date rape drug, right? Like, ah, oh, you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh man, someone put an Amral in my lemonade. Yeah. Well, this show is going to confirm what Eli just said <laughs> way too much. There's, there's a line that he says, I think it's in the voiceover. He says, the more connected you are energetically, the healthier you will feel. What? Now, I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, uh, go talk to kids who've stuck their booger-covered fingers in an electrical outlet and ask them if they feel healthier. <laughs> <laughs> you need one of those mediums we talked about at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the voiceover continues, and he, and he talks about the fact that people in the West don't slow down, that we value achievement over fulfillment. While we watch footage of Goop's employees at their desks, right? Goop, <laughs> Goop is telling us we really should learn to slow down while it's whipping its employees because they've got profit margins to hit. <laughs> right. Also, you achieve fulfillment. That's an achieving. That's <laughs> that's stupid. If you're using fulfillment in some other set, like people who say fulfillment isn't, that's what people say when they lose it stuff and they don't <laughs> achieve something. And they're like, no, well, it's all about fuck you. No, that's an achievement too. Finer score was 12 to 2. Yeah, but our team was very fulfilled. Okay. Where are okay. they? Where are they? <laughs> Go get Most popsicles. of them are crying. You're crying too. Okay. 
Also, I just quick moment. We have to talk about there is not a single Goop employee that's just sitting in a chair at a normal desk. They're all at like treadmill desks and standing desks and <laughs> in a pool of water up to their neck being zapped by <laughs> unicycle desks. Yeah. Eli, do you really want to talk about standing desks, Eli? <laughs> Look, I stacked these books. We both on- <laughs> have one, people. <laughs> I'm just saying, we don't put it on camera, Jonathan. We don't put it on camera. <laughs> Only because you guys had a Tai Chi standing desk right now. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I, I think I think when we move on from that footage, we we actually see clips of Admiral working on these women, and I have to say, he looks like a sweaty mime decided that Reiki healing wasn't sexual enough. Yes. Okay. Oh so, God, he's so it's upsetting. Bad. It's bad. He's so upsetting. Everything he does in the show. Before it's explained, it just looks like various shots of people trying to avoid being touched by this guy with their eyes closed. True. Yeah. Right? Like, it's, it's just, and I get it. Yep. I, too, would turn into a pretzel trying to avoid being touched by this guy. We God, see, I, uh, mm. yeah, we, we, see, we see Gwyneth basically attaining climax on screen with Amaral looking like he's found some sort of orifice on her back. And I want to see the version of this where Brad Falchuk, uh, Gwyneth's husband, watched the footage for the first time. Yes. Crazy billionaire reboot. Mm. Yeah. The hand motions are just, he's making them up. It's nothing. He's just (laughs) making shit up. But he still does extremely creepy, upsetting hand motions. You don't have to do that. You can just (laughs) do other wavy stuff, but he doesn't. Like, you remember the scene in Minority Report with the like virtual yes. screen? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. But remember how it didn't have any like sexual assault vibes to the hand motions? <laughs> he fixed yeah. that. He yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. He absolutely fixed that. So now it's time for our first interview with him, which, hey, starts on an honest note. She begins this by saying, what the fuck are you doing to people? And that's a great <laughs> question. They're not going to answer it honestly, but that's the first question I had. I was expecting, like, cut to black, (laughs) roll credits. (laughs) Yeah, and his answer right away is, I'm like a body worker slash chiropractor or something like, you know, not. She's like, so are you a doc? And he's like, please don't say doctor or we have to cut. Don't (laughs) say doc. This is one of the first times where that happened. Oh, I got to go live on a boat now. You said doctor. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we, uh, yeah, so on the Body of Evidence, uh, my podcast, we recently taped an interview with a former massage therapist who told me that a, a body worker is an unlicensed massage therapist. So Amaral is proudly announcing himself to be a guy who gives massages, but couldn't get licensed by a professional body. Couldn't, couldn't <laughs> commit to that three weekend day school requirement to get to exactly. become a massage <laughs> I was on a cruise once and they had evening classes. Yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a dentist. Uh, I am a tooth enthusiast, if you will. So, uh, yeah. I am a Phoenix certified tooth, <laughs> tooth, tooth worker. Master. If you could call tooth me worker. a tooth yeah. nerd. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I looked up John, whatever his name is. There is not anything skeptical about this dude in three fucking pages of Google. It's just a series of very pretty websites that have him in a white lab coat looking like a doctor. That's it. That's all you can find on this guy. Oh, wow. He like gish galloped his, his SEO by just putting mm-hmm. a bunch of lab coat pictures. To, God damn it. Yeah. And then he says, I'm not treating a particular condition when I'm working with people. <laughs> so that again, was my I know. I left. I left a bunch because Gwyneth Paltrow is the skeptic in this moment. She's like, <laughs> yeah. so what are you treating? And he's like, again, please don't use doctor words. I'm not, quote, treating anything technically. <laughs> but he says, but I have a hypothesis. And like, whatever you're about to say, dude, just <laughs> when it starts with, but I have a hypothesis, just stop. Not great. He says, change the frequency of the vibration of the body itself and you'll change the way the cells regrow. Now, this is when this is when I started popping Advil, um, not, <laughs> not because of the tension headache that would later turn into a migraine, but because I, I thought it could help with the stench of cloacal ejections I could smell from my television. <laughs> oh. You got a smart TV. Don't yeah. Google that, people. Don't Google that. <laughs> so we're vibrating at the wrong frequency sometimes is the theory here. Yeah. Jonathan, how many hertz is a good like soul vibration or body vibration? What are we supposed to be at? 
Do you know? Uh, I, it's probably 777 hertz because seven is a godly number. Ooh. Oh, that is true. Cool. Nailed it. I'm going to yes. start a website now. <laughs> 777hertz.com. You're welcome. Yes. So couldn't we just fix this with like, like if you're, the, if the number of hertz in your frequency is off, couldn't we shoot like super high pitch or super low pitch sound at, at people and fix it like that? As, instead long, of, as, as long as you don't go down to 666 hertz. I was, okay, so you got to yeah. be careful. You got to be very yeah. careful. There's a yeah. dangerous one in the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could avoid getting bad touched by that creepy dude for a giant fee with just some pitched noise. Cool. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. For sure. This is also where he says, hey... Do you find that people have diseases and then things shift? And I just wrote in my notes, a masterfully written sentence, a masterfully written sentence. <laughs> this is also where we're introduced to his reluctant evil sidekick that Keith teased at the beginning, Apostolos <laughs> Lekos. Yeah, yeah. He's an integrative physician, which is like doing a double major in medicine and fantasy prone personalities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look, rhino horn powder. What if it cures diabetes? Oh, look, sticking needles in people. What if it cures asthma? Oh, look, mentally shoving my hand through someone's butt energy field. Maybe it'll make them feel better. <laughs> Spoiler alert on the last one. We will revisit this before the episode is over. We will. Hey, you got a couple, like if we combined the needles and then switched out whatever you said for insulin, it could help diabetes. Shut up, I'm doing rhino powder. Great, <laughs> great. Also, this is where we uh, they go through their, I'm going to call it nonsense therapy fast list. Like, oh, it's yeah. like they started to get cornered by their own stupidity. So Lekos just starts listing off words and then the word therapy. He lists yep. in order magnet <laughs> therapy, light therapy, laser therapy, vibrational therapy. Mm, what? What other words are confusing to most people? Um <laughs> Compound interest therapy, uh, <laughs> whole life it's, insurance it's therapy, your, your, and their, their, their therapy, <laughs> whatever the fuck you find tricky therapy, yeah, ranked voting therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he talks about integrative medicine residencies to teach doctors how to treat people with their hands. And I mean, you know, you've got a problem when treating patients with your hands goes from surgery to shamanistic rituals. Like the arrow should be pointing in the other direction. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and now he's going to explain to us why no one has filmed his work before. And his answer is, well, you know, without the context, this looks like total fucking bullshit. You know, like like all the real things that are hard to put on film. You know, you can't film surgery. It just looks like a guy randomly stabbing another guy if you try to film surgery. It's like that. It's like that. We don't normally film because of that. Yeah. I'm one of those people who doesn't look crazy if you don't look at me. So that's what I like to do. <laughs> yeah. And he yeah. says, he, he asks rhetorically, like, you know, the, the people would be saying, like, is this person having an orgasm? And like to visualize this, you know, those those modern dance shows where you go, is that a grand mal seizure or a planned movement? Yes. Like this is, <laughs> this is possibly how those dancers have sex, allegedly. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Ooh, that makes a lot of sense. We're yeah. going to meet Julianne Huff, professional actress, <laughs> dancer. Shortly. Yes, so, yeah. we yeah. are. Right so now it's time for some hard hitting questions. And I fucking yes. love this moment so much because... Gwyneth, or the very, very unhappy assistant sitting next to her, goes, what's objectively happening when you work? And you see the two guys get so nervous because the answer is nothing, but subjectively, I'm doing magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's Elise uh, Lonan who's sitting next to Gwyneth. She's a chief content officer for Goop, and she asks him, like, what are you pulling on? Uh, people's leg, Elise. People's <laughs> leg. That's, <laughs> that's what he's pulling on. And he, t he tells her you can measure the energy of the body between four and six feet off of the body. Now, keep that in mind because at the end, his buddy, the integrative apprentice, he will actually say, you cannot measure that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's all in the same episode. <laughs> yeah. And it's later. Yeah. They will also claim that they're like, all right, well, I'm finding the best spot. It's like six feet off the body right now. You can't, he's not six feet off the body while we're watching him do this. And I know what feet are. 
and he's not. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. Even the show starts to realize it's bullshit because now it's time to bring up, I think, what all medical doctors and skeptics have been talking about lately, mm -hmm. how the double slit experiment and quantum physics relates to physical God health. damn it. <laughs> I was furious. The moment this happened, I was like, the Fed's not a Ponzi scheme. Somehow you're going to get to that. Fuck you. Oh, God. Should I attempt to explain this? Oh, please. Because my, please my note do. for this scene is, okay, I started to read the Wikipedia on the double slit experiment, but it's boring, so I'm not going to pretend to know what it meant. But I promise you that Gwyneth Paltrow and this guy also don't know what it means. <laughs> no, they, they just read the Cliff's Notes version, uh, Deepak Chopra edition. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, I'm not a physicist, but I, I will attempt to briefly summarize the experiment, uh, which most of us learn about in high school, I think, unless you went to school in the U.S., in which case you're lucky you were taught how to tie your shoes. Right. So uh, <laughs> according to one theory... Not at nice private schools that are well-funded, Jonathan. <laughs> Good. I didn't go to I'm one of those, I'm so I need you to that. explain this. But I've um, heard. I've been told. Some people have gone, they go to really good rich people's schools. It's awesome for them. Yeah, no, I was I was reading that document that Eli put together. I'm like, wow, I'm lo quickly losing faith in the American schooling <laughs> system. <laughs> so according to one theory, right, light is a beam of discrete particles called photons. Again, to our American listeners, um, it's like shooting a gun, right? Got it. Uh, but, but the bullets are called photons. Uh, for people outside hmm. the U.S. Uh, was it like a semi or like a full automatic? <laughs> what kind of gun was it? <laughs> well, I, I'm just trying to figure out like for people Bump outside. Bump stock the, for protons? Yeah, for, but outside the U.S. like, oh God, a gun, how do I? <sighs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> According to another theory, light is actually a wave, like sound is a wave through the air. And the double slit experiment consists of a laser being shown at a plate with two vertical slits in it. And there's an opaque screen behind it. And the pattern that is observed on the screen reveals that light behaves both like a stream of particles, pow, pow, bang, bang, and like a wave. <laughs> now, that's really cool and confusing, and it led to the development of quantum mechanics. But what it isn't is fucking Magneto moving things with his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Which you would not know because it will say, quantum physics proves that this isn't bullshit. The double slit experiment. And then the third sentence, real quote is, our consciousness can affect reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is Deepak Chopra. <laughs> yeah. The, this, the context of this whole thing, he brings it up right after he says that he's massaging people's energy fields at a subatomic level. First of all, if it's atoms, that's matter. And he's touched, there's physical matter again. And he's contradicted that earlier thing. But he's saying that like, he can observe photons until they become a, the female orgasm? Like, what the fuck? What is the claim here? It doesn't matter because he's talking to Gwyneth. <laughs> she, 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 she spends most of the episode going, wow. Yep, that's it. Wow. Everyone sits there oh going, wow. Oh my God, the, vo the vocal fry, the vocal like saute deep fry that she has going at moments is rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys want to talk about network spinal? <laughs> okay, well, no, we should. I is don't this want where he to, talks though. about his, the guy who trained him, Donnie Epstein? Yeah, his, okay. his Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, so not a lot of skeptical content on Donnie Epstein. However, the New World Truth.com has a blog accusing him of using demons, and it is amazing. <laughs> please, <read> that. <laughs> please Google Donnie Epstein and read it. Uh, the highlight of this absolutely beautiful last symptom before the inevitable suicide of whoever wrote it is that they pulled a picture off of Donnie Epstein's Facebook of him dressed like a witch with the caption, it's obvious he's fine with witches. Yeah, uh, network spinal is what happens when chiropractors go, doing these thrusts is hard. It's work. How could I, how could I work less? It's, I mean, it's, it's light chiropractic without the cracking. It's like Pepsi Zero. <laughs> I actually, I, I watched an animated video of it. And basically they think that there's a reset button at the back of the neck and their technique boils down to, have you tried turning it off and on again? I'm not kidding. <laughs> did, did you blow on the back of the neck like a Nintendo cartridge maybe? <laughs> right. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I also, I watched, 
I, I, I also Googled Donnie Epstein, which is not a good idea, but I did, I did find that exact same website Eli was talking about. That was the first thing I read because <laughs> it was clearly the, the, just the title. I could tell it was a Christian guy being like, this guy's exorcism are all wrong. He's not doing that correctly. That's not how you exercise somebody. <laughs> He's putting the demons in. He was putting them in. Exactly. That's literally what that website is about. <laughs> but I also watched a video of him giving a speech to like one of his little classes. He does little seminars like, like Tony Robbins. And <laughs> he's, he clearly got yelled at by a lawyer during this one too, just like John Amrell was throughout all of the goop lab. Cause he's, he's saying whatever he's saying about what's, what's the name of his thing? Vertic Net spine network, spinal network, spinal. So he's describing his nonsense network, spinal thing. But at the end of every thought, he has to mumble like, also get real medicine. You also, I, I was told you also have to get real medicine. <laughs> Clearly a lawyer made him do that. It was so fun. At the next seminar, like his lawyer actually has a microphone at the back of the room and he's the one who's like saying this after every sentence that the guy says. <laughs> and also goes to a real doctor. We tried that with Andrew in live shows. It's, it's a whole thing. It, yeah, it was just a whole lot of... <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see a better spinal thing, go see This is Spinal Tap. Just, it's <laughs> a much better spinal video. <laughs> All right. Well... I got to say, every single moment of the Goop Lab feels like a good time to take a break. This is one of those times. It's one of all the times now. <laughs> so we're going to do that. And when we come back, we'll see if Donnie Epstein's aura weighs the same as a duck's consciousness or whatever. He'll, <laughs> he'll be a witch or not. Spoiler, it does. They weigh the same. Hi, I'm Gwyneth Paltrow. You know, from Shallow Hal. Anyway... I realized that my job couldn't just be making out with Matt Damon. I wanted to change the world, which is why I created Poop Labs, the only 100% holistic plumbing service endorsed by me, Gwyneth Paltrow, you know, from three minutes of some of the Avenger movies. Today, I'm speaking with holistic plumber, shit squeezer pipe dream. So shit squeezer, what are you doing? Well, Gwyneth, in today's fast-moving world, people spend so much time on their phones. Pipes have water. I look at those pipes. Was that vague enough? Uh, legal? Uh, did he use the word plumber? Did you use the word plumber? I very much did not. Then we're good. Yeah, so today, we'll be helping out Poop Lab's own Heath Enright. Heath, tell us what's going on here. Uh, okay, yeah, so I was eating a Subway sandwich uh, on the toilet, and I go to grab my second one from the place where I keep... So, sorry, your second yeah, your second right. Subway sandwich? Yeah, on the my, my sandwich shelf in my bathroom where I keep the other one. Yeah, uh, so I was doing that. I end up dropping the first one, and that, you know, that yoga mat bread just swells up like a life raft and haven't been able to flush since. So that's my problem. Sure. I see. Shit squeezer, what's really going on here? Yeah, you know, um, so often what we think of as toilet clogs. Okay, just to be clear, it's definitely a toilet clog. It seems like you're going to get into something else. Is actually matter that is blocking the flow of energy and matter through a pipe. Wow, that is technically what? true. Wow. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take this wrench. Ooh, are you actually allowed to call it a wrench? Uh, it's just with an R. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. good. Wrench. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wave it around the toilet, just kind of, kind of waving it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Heath, has that helped? Well, um, what? Uh, real quick, just a oh. reminder: you are on TV. Uh, I am. Yeah. Yes. Television. Uh yeah. The toilet's fixed. Thank, thank you, shit squeezer. Amazing. Next week on Poop Labs is putting poop. Back inside your body, healthier? I asked it as a question, so I won't go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, 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 doing Eli stuff. Eli stuff is my favorite Hey, stuff. Eli. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I have to ask, why do you have Jonathan tied up and gagged in the other room? No reason. Hey, what do you think of my new hat? Uh, it's, it's very large. It's a big hat. Right? Yeah. It's 20 gallons. Uh -huh. Had to order it custom. Great. Uh, so this wouldn't have anything to do with your hair loss, would it? Hair loss? What? I don't 
don't. You're the one. Well, who has. Nonetheless, um, why don't you just try forhims.com? What's forhims.com? Forhims.com is a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Ooh, they sell me new skin? No, no. What? No. Because I've been looking to buy skin. No, I know. I know you are. It's not that. So Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA approved products to help treat hair loss. Hmm, that's weirdly vague language you're using. They have doctors who can prescribe you minoxidil. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. So just answer a few quick questions. A doctor reviews it. And if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that's shipped directly to your door. Oh, that is convenient. It is. Dive into 2020 hair first. Right now, our listeners can get started with their first month free. Just go to forhims.com slash gam. That's forhims.com slash gam. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash gam. Hmm, good to know. So just circling back, I feel like you've been avoiding it the whole time. Why did you tie up Jonathan? Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're fine. It's fine, Jonathan. It's fine. He said, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back. And if you were hoping to watch John Amaral do four nothings at once, you are in luck. He's about to do a <laughs> session with four different people from the Goop staff at the same time. He's like Bobby Fischer playing everyone in a circle. He's, it's bananas. He's Bobby Fischer of subatomic aura massage. Yeah. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. 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 But, but so before we see that as a prelude, we see a shot of the Goop headquarters lobby, which, uh, cause I'd never seen it before. It looks like an Apple store got robbed and Gwyneth just moved in a handful of mid-century furniture pieces Vaguely inspired by female genitalia. <laughs> it does. It Just looks vaguely. like a, it looks like a pier one divorce settlement. <laughs> and and we're gonna open so they say, yeah, he did four energy healings at once. And there's this fucking amazing moment where Gwyneth is like, How come no one invited me? And her assistant's <laughs> yeah. like, because we fucking hate you. I to mean this shindig. You got your own. That's why. Not because we hate and fear you. It's because you're weird and you're your vagina smells like a bad candle. I don't know. You just you, we're doing our own. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if like every Goop employee secretly hates Gwyneth and like they have their own and they talk behind them behind <laughs> her back when she's not around? A hundred percent. What's happening? <laughs> that is not an if. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and now it's time for us to meet Julianne Hugh Hall. Huff. Huff. Huff I guess. Sure. Yeah. It's Huff. Yeah. Who listeners may recognize for her multiple appearances on Dancing with the Stars, but and? you might also recognize her for not understanding why people were mad at her blackface Halloween costume a couple years God ago. God damn it. <laughs> I have pasted a picture of that costume in the notes. Yeah. Full blackface. Yeah. Full on. And she is the uh, CEO of. Kinergy, which I mean, I know Noah's not here, but I just have to point it out, is an anagram of cringy. <laughs> <laughs> if you spell it wrong, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and sh she's here to testify uh, that she's benefited from John Amaral's, you know, energy taekwondo thing. <laughs> but it's very funny because, of course, you know, it, it, it asks the, the the client uh, who's who's lying down to do all these weird postures. And it's like, yeah, let's see if the professional dancer will start contorting her body in response <laughs> yeah. to Admiral's routine. Like it's her job or something. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, Julianne Huff is is Gwyneth Paltrow's like Sith apprentice in this thing. It's so <laughs> she rough. She really is. Yeah. By the way, for those of you who are wondering what Julianne Huff is up to these days, uh, first of all, when you Google Kinergy, the third autocomplete result is cult. Uh, and that is because... <laughs> Kinergy is now on Oprah's 2020 tour. It's like a 9 a.m. yoga, tai chi, plyometric combination combined with nonsense dance class that's offered everywhere Oprah's Great. doing her 2020 tour. Great. Julianne Huff comes out at the beginning of her class. <laughs> 
full blackface dressed as Oprah. <laughs> you get some Tai Chi. Wow. <laughs> Great. Oh, God. So now it's time to treat Brian, the skeptic. So, yeah, so there's there. I mean, so, yeah, Brian is the Goop software architect who is our token skeptic for the episode. Let's be frank. There's there's one in almost every episode of the show. I can testify to that. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that there are any skeptics working at Goop. Like, I, I feel like they screen, <laughs> they must screen their job applicants on social media for any posting mentioning the Richard Dawkins Foundation or liking Penn and Teller's bullshit. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. <laughs> But they're just like establishing so hard, like, hey, Brian, would you describe yourself as a giant skeptic who would never be <laughs> fooled by anything? Because, you know, point being, if this works, it's 100 percent real is what we're yep. saying. And he's like, yes, that's right. They're well, like, no, well, I mean, please repeat what I just said. Exactly. Say that you're a giant. I was going to say what Brian. We don't know what Brian replies because Brian never gets through the second half of any sentence nope. he says in this episode. <laughs> But the best part is, like, he's their website guy, right? Like, he, they hired him from some fucking glass door tech marketing. He was working on Facebook, figuring out how Nazis can promote their posts. And they were like, hey, you want to do something a little bit more evil? And he was like, sure, whatever. Right? This is just a guy who knows Python libraries really well. And now <laughs> the most memorable thing he will ever do publicly is stand awkwardly on camera for a quarter of a second going... Well, I don't really know if cutaway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the scientist in me wants to question everything. And it also cut, <laughs> cut back in. I'm employed by Goop. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're also going to work on Janae, who has chest pain, sleep paralysis, which I say because that's how the TV show cut it the fuck together. <laughs> Look, I'm sure that she said some medical conditions and there Andrew <laughs> side tackled her out of the frame. So instead, they have pieced together the bad feels and where in her body it is. Yeah, he just side tackles the editor in the, in the editing room. And boom! <laughs> and then takes over the console. <laughs> Starts cutting the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then and then we we go to Elise, uh, the chief content officer, who tells Amaral that for her, you know, it's been an intense few weeks. What with selling vaginal eggs to miseducated women <laughs> right. exactly. and, and selling 400 tickets to the Ingoop Health Retreat and generally uh. rolling back public science literacy a good hundred years in her interviews. It's been tough. There's a lot of anxiety. Yeah, that must be tough for her. Yeah. Oh, and. Man, does Elise look like she's got all the... She's so ready for the fucking Goop documentary as soon as this all burns down. She's, <laughs> oh. The fire Festival documentary. She, exactly. Yeah. So, so now we cut over to Julianne Huff again, and she's going to explain that the first time John worked on her foot, she got mad because when she was 10, her parents got divorced and she had to live with her dance coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Am I exaggerating or is that exactly what she fucking says? As we all know, dancers hold trauma in their feet. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's, it's just medical <laughs> knowledge. And that's the thing. Like, she's a dancer. So when John Amaral, like, fondles her aura, she does dancer moves. And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, like, what would happen to me then? Like, I would... I'd like pretend to look for somebody and like walk away from the dance floor over the bar. <laughs> if you did that to me, I don't know. Oh, it's yeah. just how you, so I'd start doing the Macarena. I thought maybe people just start doing their jobs. So you're face down and he runs his hands over you. All of a sudden you start making fun of the whatever you can see through the little hole in the massage table. <laughs> we watch the floor. Your feet are fast. <laughs> Yeah, and then more concerning is you see footage of Amaral. Uh, he runs his hand back and forth on Brian's ass, the skeptic, and he says, really nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ugh. can I call Goop HR? Like, how how would Goop HR deal with this? Like, hi, I'm a gooper, and I think I was molested by an energy healer. Like, <laughs> what, are they, what are they gonna do? <laughs> That's okay, we'll energy, we'll energy me to him. I, and... <laughs> <laughs> this segment, by the way, uh, closes with this quote. E equals MC2. Yeah. It's true to see. You got to eat. You got to. Anyway. There's a joke in there somewhere. Keep digging. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's here. It's there. So, and it ends with this quote, which I'm sorry, I must 
I must recite because I had to watch it seven times to write it down because it's such nonsense. This is what Amral says. What's happening when I'm working with people is that they're feeling intense experiences and feeling that whole emotional range of absolute sensitivity and vulnerability to the range of absolute frustration, anger, and despair. Okay. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> yeah. But they're all yeah. like, they're all clearly like John's doing his stupid wavy thing and they're all like half orgasming and doing the whole thing. I really wanted like, James Randy to sneak in somehow and just like get behind Amaral and chloroform him, bring him down to the ground and then just watch these four people fake orgasms to the nothing that James Randy's doing in the air next to them. Be so much fun. Oh, no. And speaking of what he's doing to them, now it's time for the testimonials. So Janae is going to talk about why she started crying during her experience. Yeah. And, you know, I feel really bad because a lot of the Goop staffers throughout the show, I mean, they have real anxiety, they have real traumas, they have the stress of everyday life. I mean, they work at Goop and there's there's a way to deal with that in a healthy fashion, but they end up turning to questionable gurus who claim they can, you know, hand knife through their body's auras and they're just getting exploited. Yeah, what I what I wrote Gross. in my notes here is like this is what happens when people are not touched or have any fucking affection in their lives is that the first asshole who gives you a nice pat you're like that's fucking magic man. I had that. <laughs> Daddy. Um and there's just one little thing at the end of this segment here he explains to her that pain in your chest is sadness and I just yes. like to say as someone with now tachycardia and deep vein thrombosis I get it John Armrall call me I got some work for you to do buddy I need some hand waving You have those two conditions the doctor told you that Yes Jesus. All right So now it's time to move on to another testimonial of someone who didn't even get treated in the show but this is the best they could find. Raquel, who is 40 years old and who has been diagnosed by Amral with trauma and grief. Yeah. By the way, the first thing she says in her interview is, when I first met John Amaral, there was a woman on the table and she was screaming. That, yeah, that's I mean, the beginning. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to encourage people to follow their instincts and give in to what their intuition is telling them, go with it, Raquel. Run. <laughs> run fast. Yeah. <laughs> Your right. instincts were correct. Yeah. She's like, well, I immediately thought, I really hope this is, you know, fraud and not assault. That would be the, <laughs> the better scenario. Good news. Yeah. It was fraud. Yeah. Yeah. So she explains that she had migraines and depression, but John helped her realize that it was because she was hungry as a child. And, and now, real quote, every single cell in my body is good now. Yep. Uh, that's what I do every morning when I wake up. I just check on all of the cells in my body. I'm like, thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and quick note, Elise's face throughout this commentary is uh -huh. fantastic. Jonathan, <laughs> you have some notes on it. <laughs> yeah. So I took a little, I took a little screenshot, which I hope goes on social, on your social media, guys. Uh, because yeah, this we're back. We're, we're, you guys can't see it yet. <laughs> Tim, you must put this on our Facebook page. The world John, needs to see this, Tim. John, John put up the best side by side of elite. Go ahead. Sorry, you explain it. So, yeah. So after the testimonial, we go back to the Goop interview room and we see Elisa's face in close up. And it is amazing <laughs> because she is literally the woman version of Tucker Carlson. <laughs> literally same expression. I mean, you half expect her to start saying the science on climate change is not settled yet. <laughs> <laughs> and if you squint, you're like, is she wearing a bow tie? Like, what's going on? <laughs> she would start losing a debate to a 15-year-old. It's true. Uh, so we cut back to the main room, right? We watch Tucker Carlson and drag. Uh, and then Dr. Lekos. So again, what we'll realize, as Heath introduced at the beginning, Dr. Lekos's job is John Armwall says something totally insane and then dr lekos says vague words connected to medicine words so yeah. that's going to take the form of there's a correlation between what happens to you and your body yeah you know when kids start to imitate adults who are speaking in tongues in church and like they slowly you slowly get the hang of it mm -hmm. that that's what's happening yeah and is, is this the part where Gwyneth 
jumps in to ask a very important question. She says, oh, yeah. oh it sounds like you're describing, are, do you mean like, like molecules of motion? <laughs> and John Amaral says, yes, like molecules of motion. <laughs> And that's gonna be that's gonna be the title of the book, Molecules of Emotion, yeah. mm-hmm. a memoir by John Amaral. Sentimentium bonded with philium. <laughs> yeah. Molecules of emotion, the Heath and Wright story. <laughs> <laughs> now with more tachycardia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I studied molecular biology. We never covered molecules of emotion. Again, I must no? have been uh, must have been nodding off during that particular mm-hmm. class. <laughs> All right. Well, it's another time in the time dimension again. So we're going to take another quick break. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to learn about proper digestion of emotion molecules. I'm pretty sure we will. Hi, I'm Jonathan Jerry, and I'm Eli Bosnick here to talk to you about a fantastic new healing process called Therapy. Therapy is based on the ancient tradition of China, the Native Americans, and whatever other ancient culture you've ascribed inherent wisdom to. Indeed, it is. Its practitioners, known as Therapyists, spend years training in the technique at something known as Sahakul. Indeed, they do. Therapy uses the electrical impulses from your brain to induce speech. Yes, and then vibrational therapy to the inner ear, which in turn reaches the brain. Therapy is useful in treating depression, anxiety, trauma, and much, much more. And best of all, it can be supplemented with natural remedies that come from nature. That's right, Eli. None of the medications prescribed by your therapist don't come from the natural world. No antimatter here. So, if you've got stuff you're dealing with, why not try the ancient ritual of therapy today? Therapy. Because otherwise, you might end up with a weirdo doing slow motion disco over your butt. <laughs> And then I, I think we'll go for dinner or something. Uh, wh- wh- what about you? Oh, us? Yeah, it, it's actually fine. She said she doesn't need to do anything special for Valentine's Day, so not really Stop anything. right there! Oh, uh, who are you? Dan Dinkins, love translator, and you're about to make a big mistake. I am? Nobody wants nothing for Valentine's Day because everyone wants to feel loved, you maloink. That's true. Yeah, but it's too late to do anything now, isn't it? It would be if it weren't for Books.com. What's Books.com? The Books Company is the best way to buy a variety of beautifully styled bouquets, sweet treats, plants, gifts, and succulents. Wow, that does sound good. But uh, I really like to give people handmade gifts. What does that mean? Ah, It means he doesn't want to spend a lot of money. It does? Yes, that's exactly what it means. Yep. Well, don't worry, schemer from Shining Time Station. Books offers blooms starting at just $39. That that does sound good. It is good. Books sent us some product and they smell amazing and look fantastic. Get 25% off your order from the Books company by going to B-O-U-Q-S dot com slash awful or using the code awful at checkout. Man, that's okay. That's great. She's really going to appreciate this. So. Oh, he wants to ask for outfit stuff. No. Yes, I do. (laughs) And we're back. And now it's time for John Amaral and his (laughs) reluctant evil assistant to the regional energy shaman to give uh, a little pump fake towards a real piece of science, but then go right back to the nonsense. (laughs) Yeah! Is that right? Do they not? They mention something real for a second here, right, Jonathan? They do. They mention the work of Candace Pert. I was not familiar with her. I had to look her up. She was a genuine neuroscientist, and she's credited with discovering the receptor to which endorphins bind in the brain. Uh, she held important positions at the National Institute of Mental Health. So, you know, a genuine scientist. And she thought small protein-like molecules exchanged by neurons were responsible for our emotions, which, you know, emotions aren't balls of mystical energy. There must be some physical correlate, so not a bad idea. So, 
I, I, I think this may be a case of respectable signs being stretched out of recognition by goop, like a used up therapeutic band you use for stretching. <laughs> <laughs> or, as we might call it, molecules of emotion. Check mate skepticism. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Gwyneth just described this as molecules of emotion, and they're like, well, uh, speaking of which, this is a real science thing that we said next to molecules of emotion. So that's a connection. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then Lekos, and this is the bit that I love where he <laughs> says, I don't think the technology is quite there to measure energy healing. <laughs> what? <laughs> My job is immeasurably important. <laughs> yeah. So in the beginning, we're told you can't measure this. And now his assistant's saying, you can't measure this. <laughs> Amaral's like, shut up, shut up. <laughs> I mean, you can measure the body, but not the thing we do. Never mind. And, and then again, he's just entirely going to debunk himself here. Apropos of nothing, he decides to volunteer. Just because something hasn't been proven doesn't mean it doesn't work. Yep. <laughs> and just because something isn't proven doesn't mean you can't charge 500 bucks an hour for it. <laughs> I actually, I, I don't know how much Admiral charges for this because it's not on his website and he only takes on VIPs as personal clients because he's figured out that celebrities have money and they can convince of can be convinced of practically anything. Oh, it's true. It's market. Pr it's it's if you have to ask, you can't afford it level. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's not on the menu. Yeah. And this is when we get to see him doing a little bit more of his nonsense uh, aura massage thing. And he starts announcing what he's doing. He's like, and now I'm putting my hand in the, the most sensitive part of your aura, which is, you know, four to six feet away. Again, not the distance that he is from the body. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And they don't respond a couple of times right away like they're fucking supposed to in the script. And he's like, I said, now I'm putting my hand <laughs> in the sensitive part. Like, yeah. seems like you wouldn't have to announce which parts of the aura you're manipulating because, you know, they'd feel that if it was real, right? Yeah. He's like a, he's like a bad magician who's working with like ad hoc assistants who weren't practiced for this. Yeah, he brings his hand up, he way, way up to tap into Elisa's energy. Like he needs to find good reception. And I thought people like him were opposed to 5G wireless, but I guess, I guess not. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it if Amaral fell on hard times and he had to star in a revival of those old Verizon commercials. <laughs> Can you feel me now? Can you feel my bad touch now? <laughs> and I just want to point out, there's a little moment here. We, we take a side note here to point out that uh, if you think this is bullshit, you're sexist which I think was a fucking brilliant technique, right? They do this little interview where Gwyneth and Elise are talking about how like women aren't allowed to scream and their voices are silenced in society and you make weird noises when Amaral does this thing, hey, therefore... Fuck, don't make good points about other sociological stuff and then go back to your bullshit science fake stuff. No, absolutely not, no. I thought they were going to pan over to Janae and she was just going to be like, what? <laughs> Pan, pants back again nothing nothing don't worry about it yeah then when Elise when Elise talks about her own personal experience Gwyneth says could you get any goop here and I, I again I get the feeling that Gwyneth surrounds herself with crackpots and fantasy prone personalities who picture like the weirdest stuff but she's actually the level headed one but she's so tired from her juice cleanses that she's like alright let's sell rocks in yeah a I don't know call it, sure. call it Madison why not my my vagina doesn't feel jady enough. Yeah, let's do it. Great. Yeah, she uses the word. She like very clearly uses the word goop or goopy to mean liar here. Like she's fully aware of it. I loved. Yep. I love that little moment. Yeah, quick self awareness. <laughs> well, the also thing that's great is like it's very clearly someone's been like it's all about self branding. Like make sure you're working the brand in right. It would be like if every time we made a good joke on this show, it's like oh, oh, oh these god awful movies. Am I right? I do Boing. <laughs> Could you be yeah. any more god awful? Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is where Elise, I think, she says, uh, right after John did his awesome, amazing healing to me, I started dry heaving a lot. Yes. Yep. What? Like it was a positive. Like, are you supposed to dry heave after a healthy thing happens to you? Is that how that works? Because she says it felt like an exorcism, right? Yeah. That's the line from the trailer. Like, I had an exorcism. That's what she's talking about. Yeah, God. it's um, it's very upsetting, especially as, <laughs> as a person watching it who knew that nothing happened to her. 
the nothing somehow did a bad thing. Yeah, they could have said nothing. And <laughs> several times, a couple more times in this episode, they'll be like, yeah, I know I vomited too. Totally. That That's that's it's good. We uh, <laughs> John Amaral makes you vomit like real science vomit. Positive. That's on his business card. But now it's time to learn at last about what happened during Gwyneth's session with John. Oh, yes. She cried a lot. <laughs> and uh, Amaral says that she internalizes so much stuff about the character she plays. And I get it. Uh, I would also be crying a lot if I'd start in shallow hell in a fat suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wrote in my notes, she internalizes the character she plays. I just wanted to watch that energy session. He's doing the Macarena over her unconscious body, just going like, this is that time he threw you into the fire in Iron Man 3. I remember that was hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is another uh, weird flex, too. Like... Hey, you know what I was not having enough of in my life? Dry heaving and weeping. And John Amaral <laughs> fixed it for me for the low, low price of I'm a multimillionaire. You can't afford it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to close this with a, another hard hitting question from Elise who asks, doing this work, how do you keep your energy? Real quote. How do you keep your energy clean and strong? Yeah, I'm sure the money helps. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on aura massage from John Amaral. Wink, tooth sparkle, ding. Yeah, it's it's so rough. Well, what's great is that he doesn't have an answer for it, right? Because obviously, of course, if this was real and you were constantly diving your hands into the chocolate pudding of other people's anxiety that wavers six feet from their body, it would affect you in some way. But because he's not doing anything real, he's like, ah, oh, no, it's fine. It's great cardio. Just, you know, <laughs> hey, Macarena, Macarena, Macarena. The, the John Amaral workout DVD. <laughs> All right. So now it's time to actually watch Gwyneth during her section. And we're going to learn that she is very tired. <laughs> yeah. A a anorexic looking Gwyneth, who does juice cleanses, is mysteriously drained of energy. It, it defies weird. explanation. Very Where weird. could very it come weird. from? Yeah. Also... Yeah. This is where she's going to explain that her cesarean scar acts up when John works on her. Yeah. And he says, this this is his response to that. Well, you know, we don't consider rupturing our energetic planes when we get a C-section. Yep. I, I I don't know what to say about that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Just going in to get know. your tonsils removed and you're like, cool, cool. I'm so sorry. The anesthesiologist, can I talk to you real quick? Do you have any anesthesia for my energetic planes as well? I just don't want to go through trauma <laughs> on the, oh, I'm a crazy person. You're giving me extra. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Also, did he say that he's going to get her into her parasympathetic zone like she wasn't there like she didn't have that going on in her body already yeah yeah he did okay <laughs> uh, I, I'm not the science guy but Jonathan correct me if I'm wrong parasympathetic that's like your your nerves telling your heart to go right yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's all the unconscious stuff so there's just there's no you don't need to do anything it's cool just, it's so just, the juice cleanses had that stopping in her to some extent and then this, yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, don't worry. I'm gonna unplug the router, plug it back in. I'm gonna brace, get your brain and heart going again. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and all this stuff, Elise says, you know, it's totally dismissed by most conventional doctors. Yeah, Elise. Now, do do you think there's a reason why a majority of qualified healthcare professionals are dismissive of a notion like that? Do you think? <laughs> you think maybe they know something you don't? I don't know. Right, and because this is bullshit. You know, you got to bring up energy, you got to bring up planes, got to bring up quantum physics, but you also have to bring up the fascia. Oh, <laughs> yes. Fascia is as much a cue to medical bullshit as are you a good person is a cue to Christian bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so the, the 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 fascia is basically the the saran wrap around your 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 muscles and all that kind of stuff. And they think we are told in this episode, I'm not making this up, that consciousness is expressed through the fascia. Now, forget <laughs> the brain, right? The seat of consciousness is collagen. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm going to have to stop this recording. I need to jump out my window. It's only going to take a second. Yep, Bye. I get it. Well, I get it. Uh, Jonathan, uh, 
mm, I don't mean to correct you, but I'm pretty sure they're they're basically liquid crystal. Like, you know oh, when you touch God. an LCD screen and it's a consciousness? It's like that. I, I mean, You should probably read up on it. <laughs> That's literally what he says. He says yeah. it's like when you touch an LCD screen. Yeah, he said that. And uh, by the way, it's not like they're not going to back this up with another very real doctor it. This is where we're going to meet James Oshman, whose first Google result is energymedicineuniversity.org and looks like Gary Busey drank polyjuice potion of a baby. <laughs> this is the best. They introduced this by being like, hey, um, just, you know, quick thing. Doctors say that you're a liar. <laughs> I think Elise says that. And he's like, hey, Elise, can I, um, can I talk to you over here off camera really quick? <laughs> Great. <laughs> and then they come back into the frame. Actually, Elise, there's a doctor of philosophy who disagrees with what you just said. What'd you say really soft? Doctor of what? <laughs> Nothing. Just, just said doctor. Next seed. Next Art, seed. Philosophy? I, think, I feel like you said philosophy. Is that the same? Oh, and I just one more quote from this section. This is where John says, we're coming up against some limitations of the matter to matter kind of healing where you do physical work <laughs> on the physical. What? So again, translation, the problem with medicine is that it does too much stuff. <laughs> yeah, he must have watched Doctor Strange and, and thought, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I need a cape now. Just gotta find Tilda Swinton. <laughs> <laughs> he already has a cape. Definitely already no, has a cape. Absolutely. Hundred yeah. percent they like made him take it off right before every scene. Yeah. Yeah. No question. So now we're gonna meet another testimonial. This is John 57, who was cured. Which is not of, a Bible quote. No. Of his <laughs> numbness. Yeah. And just to be very clear, he had lymphoma, but this program is not claiming they cured his lymphoma. They they cured his numbness. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. He never had, well, yeah, no, he had numbness. And then the doctor said, you have a 50-50 chance of remaining numb. It's almost as if they're also telling you that you have a 50-50 chance of not remaining numb. <laughs> Almost like numbers mean something, like <laughs> they add up mathematically. <laughs> yeah. And the reason shh is because he paid John Amaral for a bunch of <laughs> sessions. And then after <laughs> never being touched physically by John Amaral, his spine felt better and he had some, you know, feeling again in his body. So one of those 250s happened. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And, and now it's time for the fourth dimensional butthole. So... We've been teasing it throughout the program, but it's time for Dr. Legolas the Elf to try his own hand at energy healing. And I'm, I'm going to describe what I saw. I want you guys to jump right in if you didn't see this. Uh -huh. He points to Janae's butthole and he goes, this, this right here, this is a super receptive spot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the evil assistant is super reluctant. He's just like, okay, you're, you're pointing at the victim's, sorry, the patient, can I say, no, I uh, can't say patient. You're pointing at the butthole though, right? I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> okay, but, but I mean, before we continue making fun of this, I mean, this is, seriously, this is the part of the episode where I got genuinely angry because there are two white men, right? And they're hovering above this black woman who's a goop staffer, Janae, and she's face down on a massage table and they both start touching her bum, calling the area, quote, more receptive, quote, kind of like a sponge that, quote, it draws you in, that, quote, there's really, there's a lot of energy flowing right in this one little point. And, and he tells the other guy to ask her to, quote, open up her body. And the other guy says he felt his hand go inside her body. Now, g you know, given the fetishization of black women's bums, um, am I the only one who felt uncomfortable and angry watching this? Sequence? Oh my God, Ab this is absolutely so uncomfortable. Also, because Lekos very clearly has to fake it. So he's like, yeah, no, my, uh, my hand went through her. I would like to not call it a booty. Stop, Can stop we... holding up that card that says call it a booty. But yep, my hand went into her and I, and then yeah. he says, you know, I was thinking maybe that was bullshit, but then my hand went through her head and I was like, well, this is very real. And just one other thing about Lekos during this weird violation scene, why is he wearing scrub pants 
here? Science. Did anyone else notice he was wearing scrub pants? <laughs> they're called science pants. They're science Eli. pants, Eli. Yeah. Just that's, like they're... That's real. You're not legally allowed to sue someone for wearing scrubs? You can't wear the top. Yeah. You can't wear the top, but the bottom is fine. Yeah. God, that was so creepy. I want... That's... I mean, the reason he ends up touching her head... The, the assistant guys, because he was clearly uncomfortable. He was like, yeah. stop. We're, you just said to that I, my hand got pulled into her butthole. You just said, that you, we need. can we just do this? Not anywhere else on the body, but this would be great. And then they're like, okay, yeah. I mean, there's magical energy dimensions in the neck too. Is this better? Not much, but yeah, a little bit, nope. I guess. <laughs> Somewhat less worse. And then again, as we teased earlier, they say that Janae woke up in the middle of the night and threw up for an hour. Yeah. Which is really not good because, and look, most of the time when this stuff happens, it be, it's because someone uses like bullshit, untested CBD oil to massage somebody and they forget to mention it or whatever it is. But like, you shouldn't be throwing up from the nothing. The worst possible thing that could happen to you during this energy medicine healing is something. Oh, <sighs> yep, that happened. Yeah, and this is this is one of those times when Gwyneth jumps in and she's like, oh yeah, no, totally, there's vomiting. That's the best, that's how you know it's good. The first time uh, with John for me, I also barfed. Well, no, I didn't. I th I thought I was going to barf, though. I ha it had like a real <laughs> barfy feel. So mine worked too, right? That kind of, that's It's positive, right, John? That's what you said. <laughs> yeah, she tries to be a story topper with I also felt like I needed to throw up. <laughs> Exactly. Oh God. It's like it's like hanging out with five year olds and one of them like scrapes his knee and then the other one just like points to a random part on their body and is like me also here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she was vomiting molecules of metabolized emotion, probably. That's what happens. That's when it Yeah. That'll gets, get you. Yeah. I mean it's, your... it's 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 all about purging, right? It's all about it's it goes way back to you know religious belief of like there's bad stuff inside of me and I need to to you know uh, purge it from my body. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this is molecules of humors. Yep. Emotional <laughs> yep. humor molecules. Demons, goop yeah. demons. So now it's time to close things up with final thoughts and uh first first final thought is that Gwyneth now touches herself and that's energy healing. Yeah, Gwyneth says to the cat, I mean, she, she tells people that she starts to feel out of body when she's at work sometimes, and she has to put her hands over her throat and heart. Gwyneth, if, if you're having freakish out of body experiences at work, you need to see a mental health specialist. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. We also check in with Brian, who we haven't seen for any of this fucking episode, nor did we, by the way, interview him about how his energy healing session went, even though he was one of the four people. Yeah. But we will get half a sentence of him here. <laughs> yeah, he says, he says, I could almost feel where his hands were going to be without seeing them. I mean, it's almost like Amaral was telling him very clearly and loudly what he was about to do. Yeah. yeah. Also, almost feeling where his hands were is not feeling where his hands were. That's what those words mean. Yeah. And he, Brian ends this by saying, you know, the scientist in me wants to think about this or do any research. Hard cut away. <laughs> <laughs> we will never see Brian again. <laughs> <laughs> he might as well end it by going, but like lying down is nice. Th Please don't fire me, man. I just honestly, I really just know HTML5 and a lot of guys know HTML4. I really didn't think I was going to be on camera. <laughs> For this, I'd like to go back to working for the Russians. <laughs> oh, uh, and that's where episode whatever about the energy experiences is, is over. Okay, last question before we wrap it up. After watching John Amaral at work, how are you guys feeling like butthole energy wise? Better, worse, same? <laughs> Does energy diarrhea count? I mean, that's that's yes. what I've been feeling. Yeah, that's what I've been feeling. But I'm purging. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's, I am a much uh, wet heave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, we're gonna close it out. But we're still doing this podcast, apparently, and not becoming auric butthole therapists. That's what Andrew told Fools. us. We have to Fools. keep doing this instead. <laughs> so tell us, Eli, what's on deck? Sing over me. Great. Ex-gay country star documentary. Here we come. Fantastic. 
All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 233 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Double J, Jonathan Jerry, for joining us again. Can I call you Double J? Is that okay? I don't know. You're gonna have to earn it, I guess. JJ. <laughs> I feel like as, as long as you as long as you admit that Montreal bagels are better than New York bagels, and you can absolutely it. not Whoa. cut. And wow. we're back. <laughs> Big thanks to Jonathan Jerry for joining us again, full name, <laughs> and uh, for <laughs> for some more skipping the BDS and doing just the M with us. Much appreciated. And if the listeners wanted to hear more from you, where should they go? Uh, so I write for the McGill Office for Science and Society, separating sense from nonsense for the public. Uh, everything that I do is on my website, uh, jonathanjerry.com. I have a podcast called The Body of Evidence, which is awesome. And I'm on Twitter at Cracked Science. Fantastic. And New York Bagels are better. Once again, huge thanks to all <laughs> no, the Patreon not. donors. <laughs> if you'd like to support the arts of hating other arts, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. That'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And also 43, I believe, and counting bonus episodes about movies like Cats, the musical, the movie, and sometimes movies with Mark Wahlberg in them. Oh, get excited, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can also help us out by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark. And all that was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Jonathan Jerry and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House. Breakfast Cap Animal House, House we voted. Clothes, we New voted York on it. better. John Amrill went on to don a gray jacket and horn rimmed glasses for a new series of Verizon commercials, in which his famous line was, Can you feel my hand now? <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel my hand now? <laughs> Soon after that commercial, John Amaral got taken to court, where a victim showed the jury on a doll's aura where he touched her. <laughs> Brian the Goop Skeptic would be fired for refusing to drink his own pee next season. <laughs> Poor guy. Just wanted to make a website. Get him on the show. Get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs>
If you would like to buy a Shit Squeezer <laughs> Pipe Dream t-shirt. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <clears throat> this may take several takes. Let's, let's, see. let's see how we can do this. Yeah, there's also a, uh, an additional second on my end. What's there that, go. Jonathan? You think statins don't work? All right. Anyways, <laughs> Keith, you want to bring us back into the show? <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do to every skeptic in my life right now. <laughs> Stop talking. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You never. Dude. Eli just I got side tackled by Jonathan. He ran from Montreal. <laughs> yeah, but Marsh tackled me at the exact same time right. from the other side. So I'm just standing up in a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. You'll, you'll, you'll hear. You'll, you'll heal in a, in a year or two. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.